Hi, John Monaco here for Contract Global Sourcing. What I want to show you today is the CGS2. It's a six-way adjustable concealed undermount with soft close built in. It's a full extension drawer with a continuous action soft close. It has six-way adjustable on the front bracket, so let me show you them. I want to get a little close-up on them. Now let's take a look at the front brackets. One identifier easy is there are left hand it's marked with the L and on the right hand bracket the right hand is marked with an R. Let's take a look now at the adjustments that you have on these brackets. I've got my side to side adjustment here, I've got my height adjustment right here, and I have my depth adjustment right here. One of the nice features on the side to side adjustment is on the gray portion right here and on the orange portion right there, I have arrows that line up. So when I am doing my side to side adjustment, I can balance the adjustment from one to the other bracket. That way I know my adjustments push the drawer over. You can see now how the arrows aren't in alignment. Where I shifted the arrow over to the right, the fixed arrow is there. Now I can balance the left hand bracket and have the same adjustment. On my height adjustments right here, which it's the wedge that goes in between the bottom of the drawer and the cabinet member itself, which raises the drawer or lowers the drawer just by adjusting this. And then my depth adjustment is here, where I've got this screw goes and pushes against the cabinet member, which brings the drawer in or out for the depth that you need. Mainly needed on inset application, but sometimes to fine tune the drawers at depth adjustments nice. Now let's take a look at the drawer side itself. Now here is the cabinet member for the full extension undermount. First off, I want to show you that they all come with a shipping block in here. And that's nice in that it keeps or minimizes any movement of the drawer member to the intermediate member to the cabinet member during shipping, as well as protects the shroud that's over the springs. One of the nice things that we have here is we have a shroud that covers the springs. An issue you have sometimes in uh, uh, cabinet shops or in the install is wood chips or granite chips getting into the springs and fouling them. You won't have that issue with here. You've got your pin that's welded on the side of the drawer member that engages the soft close mechanism. So it's a continuous action. You've got the pin that goes into the back of the drawer which is the same 30 millimeter opening that you need and the recess in is that's a six millimeter pin recessed in 10 millimeters. So that's identical to the industry standard that's out there. Now let's take a look at the three major components of the actual drawer slide and see why this drawer slide is a hundred pound capacity but one of the best ones on the market. Now let's take a look first of the three major components you've got. You've got your cabin member portion. You've got your cabinet members with your uh, 32 millimeter hole spacing. You've got elongated holes front to back. You've got your 37 setback hole, the elongated slots. In case you're doing an inset application, you can do some fine tuning as well as you have the front bracket. But now let's look at the stability of the rollers. You've got a cushioning bumper on the front and back of your large roller carriage. You've got six roller bearings on the side, three here, three in the back. You've got 10 roller bearings on the top that go in between the intermediate member and the cabinet member. And then you've got four roller bearings and two wheels. The wheels actually keep it tight against the side of the steel so that you don't get that rocking action with the drawer as the intermediate member and the drawer member extend. Now let's look at the intermediate member. Now let's take a look at the intermediate member. The intermediate member is really the strength of the drawer slide. It's designed so that when the drawer member is fully extended, it's able to hold the 100 pound capacity. The way we achieve that is with bends. When you have steel, anytime you bend steel, it kind of gives it a strengthening rib. I've got seven different bends. I've got a bottom bend up to a radius, into the upper radius, across the top, another bend down, into another radius that goes down to my bottom radius. So there's seven different bends on this intermediate member. With that, you have then your roller bearings that go in between the drawer member and the intermediate member. Again, for stability with the drawer, they're wide. They have cushioning bumpers that bump against stops here and in the back, as well as the second half in here against the back there. You can see I have four bearings for stability 
in between the drawer member and the intermediate member and I've got ball bearings on the side on both sides to keep that from rocking while it's doing the opening and closing cycle. Now let's take a look at the drawer member. The final member now of the undermount drawer slide would be the drawer member portion and while there's not a lot with it other than it does have the engaging point for the front locker device the slot that we have on the side of ours is not a big wide slot because we want that uh, front bracket to snap in and and seat completely and not rock we also have the welded pin on the side to engage into the soft close mechanism and then you get the hook into the back of the slide the hooks into the back of the drawer to snap the front bracket in place i'm going to come in here and you can see there's a slot that that goes into and the slot where it locks in and it's in there tight it's not going to wobble around on you so you don't have the sloppiness in between the bracket and the drawer member another feature i had them add to the cabin members was I wanted them to have holes on the bottom of the drawer slide so that if you wanted to mount the drawer slide onto a deck you could screw directly through to the bottom so there are two holes for mounting we're putting the holes on the 21 18 15 and 12 we don't have them on the 9 because the 9 is too short and you don't have a location to do it but at least that allows anybody that wants to add a drawer slide to an adjustable shelf you can do it by mounting these directly onto the shelf itself and now the proper location for your rear face frame brackets from the inside edge of the phrase face frame to the center hole it's 14 millimeter over here's the face frame here from there to dead center is 14 millimeter over so all you need to do then is measure the offset from the frame here to the side of your cabinet and that gets you plus the 14 puts you dead center into where the rear bracket needs to be mounted to center it on the cabinet what I also wanted to show you is the CGS 2 9 inch there's the shipping block it's a full extension soft close it has the same hole pattern standard 37 setback elongated slots but we also have a slot in the back for the face rim adapter plate so if you need to do this without mounting it to the side of the cabinet you just use the face rim adapter bracket and you can mount it to the back of the cabinet that being said we also have the testing standards we have an independent testing report for the ANSI KCMA standards where we've modified the testing to 100 pound capacity so should you need that it is available to you and now the installation of the front brackets one of the things we have available to you is a template that you're able to pre-drill for the front brackets that way you're going in at the correct angle and you're going to be able to secure the front bracket to the front of the subfront of the drawer you just take it over it's marked rights and lefts you can see rights and lefts i'm going to slide it over with your vix bit you can pilot drill mount my bracket And just a test to make sure it locks into position slide it up and it locks in one of the things that you're going to be noticing the drawers are uh drawer slides are designed for 16 millimeter or 5 8 inch thick drawer but you can use it on a half inch drawer but i also need then there's a three millimeter spacer shim that then positions the uh, front locker device at the correct location so that this actually locks in let me show you that and now to the pilot drill for the half inch material I'm going to use the same template slide it in pilot drill now I'm going to show you what happens if I mount this like this without the shin
on this side, I'm going to use the shim. If I take and I'm going to slide the slide up, it doesn't latch in. Look, it's partially in, but if I use the spacer, it locks into position. You can't have that. You're going to have a problem. So that's why you, if you're going to be using the half inch drawer box, these are going to come packed within the front, uh, the poly bag that has the two front brackets. So you don't have to order them separate. They'll always be there. If you're not using them, throw them away.